black and white. She signed me into foster care. Um, at that point, they made my sister leave. I couldn't see my sister again. Um, they kicked her out, and I just, it was so sad. I waited in that room for mad long, mad long, and I just see my sister outside waiting for me, thinking I'm coming. I'm not coming. Like, I'm going to a whole nother home, man. Um, what up, y'all? It's Cassidy, and I guess I'm up first for the story time. Alright, so I have no idea what I'm going to talk about. I'm just going to talk. Um, October 2015 um, was the day that my a lot of my life changed. Not too much, but a lot. Um, October 2015 at 5.30 in the morning, our our house got raided. Um, 5.30 in the morning, boom, Shenango County Sheriff, get on the ground, riot shield, surrounded, all that. Um... That was, that was absolutely crazy. That was, I've never seen nothing like it. Um, they acted like we had a whole fugitive up in there and like, <laughs> we ain't had much of nothing. Um, and that night before, like when I think about it, the night before, I would have never thought that that was what was going to be happening the next morning. Um, we didn't have much of anything. Um, it was a bad night. Uh. But yeah, it wasn't, we wasn't, it wasn't nothing crazy. When uh, my dad got busted, he had uh, one bag and a uh, script of gabapentin, and he went upstate for five years um, over that one bag and a script of gabapentin. Not that I, um, not that I'm, I, that was the best thing that ever happened to him. Um, he's five years clean because of that, uh, but he lost five years of his life. Um, which is crazy because people can rape people and not lose that much of their life. Um, and his drug dealer was a doctor at first, so. Um, that that morning, cops kicked in the door, boom, boom, boom. Um, I remember they talked to their whole investigation statements, all that. Um, and as soon as those cops left, the first thought that came to my mind is how am I going to get my next fix? And like, that's crazy. Like, my parents just went to jail. Um, my dad's about to go upstate, like, and I'm thinking about my next fix. Um, at, when we got busted, we had not had, we had, we didn't have any electric. So we didn't stay in the trailer much longer. Me and my sister, I was with my sister, um, we stayed there maybe three more days, and then I went to um, this, my uncle's, and uh, God bless him, he's dead. Um, I have a lot of resentment over that. Um, I completely turned his house to a trap house. Um, it was an elderly home. Uh, I had people in and out selling drugs. Um, I had my dog in there, my big old pit bull, and, like, you ain't allowed to have dogs. They play cards out in the lobby. Like, it's an elderly home, a straight elderly home. Um, they had cameras. I would cover the cameras with tape, my hat, whatever. Uh, I'd have people come through the windows. And because of me, he got kicked out of that place. He did end up getting another place, but I hold a lot of regret over that. Um, I wish I could... I mean, today I'm showing him that I'm a better person, but I wish he was here to see it. Um, I wish he was here to meet my kids and all that and see that, like, it wasn't all for nothing. Um, so that morning of the drug bus, the cops had said, um, don't drive that car, it's marked. When someone, a cop, a detective tells you don't drive a car, it's marked, nine times out of ten, you're not going to drive that car. Not me, not my sister. About five hours later, we hopped in the car and went to the city and caught drugs. Um, that night was just sad. Um, it hit me at nighttime. It hit me that my parents weren't there. I was by myself um, with my sister. Like It was crazy. It was crazy to me. Something I never thought would happen actually happened. And something that people had been telling us was going to happen, happened. Um, after that, that was 
my shit got rough. Um, I was very ruthless. Um, I didn't care. I didn't have a care in the world. I had so much hurt in my heart. Um, and that was actually um, the time when me and, uh, me and my sister, we were going to our friend's house and um, we were getting drugs. And when we got there, I had robbed the guy for the drugs and uh, he pulled out his gun and uh, his buddy pulled out tape and they was gonna try to tape me up. They thought I had, had took the drugs. Um, granted, I did take the drugs. And you think like at that moment when like he just pulls out a gun and they have tape, like I would be like, here, like take the drugs. Nah, I didn't. I kept the drugs. Um, and me and my sister did our thing. We stayed there that whole night. Um, they took our cell phone from me, from us, so we couldn't get a hold of nobody. That next morning, uh, my sister had found the cell phone and got a hold of someone and got us a ride out of there. But like, um, that was a situation that could have turned into something a lot bigger, a lot bigger. Um, after that, uh, I just was on a run. Um, I was determined that I was going to bail my father out, um, which wasn't happening. It was $20,000. wasn't happening. Um, I just, I didn't know what to do. Um, I, I didn't know what to do at all. I was lost. I couldn't see my parents because I was under the age. They're my legal guardian. I should be in foster care, but foster care done, they done left me. They shouldn't have left me, left me with my sister. She, like, nah, they just left me. Um, so I couldn't see my parents at all. I didn't see my parents for a good six months, seven months. Um, so anyways, I was on, like I said, I, I turned that elderly home into a trap house. Um, finally, I had decided, like, I need help. I can't do this no more. And I had went to Connecticut, um, I went to Connecticut. I was in Connecticut for about two weeks. My cousin was gonna get custody of me, all that, and um, I couldn't do it. I came back home. Um, on the way home, my cousin chased me down. It was crazy. He didn't want me to leave. He was just trying to save my life, honestly. So I had my my friend pick me up, and um, I, we're driving down the highway, and all of a sudden we just boom, smack right into us. This big ass truck smack right into us. I said, shit, it's my cousin. Like, it's my cousin, he's coming. So we're, I'm, we're in a little Cadillac boys in a fucking big ass Chevy. So we're, at this point, we're in the ditch, yo. My, my guy, Tom, he just, boom, fucking, he drove that shit right out. We're getting it. We're doing like one, 110 like we're getting it and he's trying to hit us he's on her ass time's breaking fucking going breaking like i this shit was crazy yo and we're on the, the freeway we're getting it um they're chasing us throwing shit out out the window pull over pull over because they want me i'm in the car they want me out they have custody of me um but it had not went through the system that they got custody of me but they did have custody of me but i wasn't trying to stay i was trying to get back home because i was a drug addict um, so they're chasing us, chasing us. We're going probably maybe a buck, a buck 15 now. We p pass state trooper. Boom, pass him. I'm getting it. Tom's, they getting it. Tom's getting it. Um, so I said, shit, we just passed the cop. So we duck off into the fucking thing. And then we pull into the gas station. Cops right behind us. My cousin's right behind us. So I'm in the car. I'm talking about shit. To my cousin, like get the fuck out of here. I ain't going with you. Blah blah blah. Da da da. Um, and unfortunately, there was not my cousin could do to keep me there. He did have custody of me, but the papers had not went through yet, so it wasn't in the system that he had custody of me. So there wasn't much he could do. Um, but at that point, he was just trying to save my life. He, I was going back home to, um, and someone. I just it wasn't good. I wasn't going home to nothing good. Um. I had been clean two weeks the whole time I was in Connecticut. As soon as I got back home, I was right on again. As soon as I got back home, I copped a 50 of heroin. Um, and I was off. Uh, 
that next day I called my caseworker CPS because I had, oh, I forgot to add, the reason why I actually ducked off to Connecticut is because CPS had said they was going to be coming to put me in foster care, and I was not trying to go to foster care. That's the actual reason I went to Connecticut and to get clean. Um, so I had called my CPS worker and said, like, look, I couldn't do it down there, da 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 um, I'm back. She says, all right, I need you to come in for a wellness check. Me thinking I'm doing the right thing, like, all right, it's just a wellness check. I go in, um, and that was the last day as a minor that I was at. They took me in foster care. Um, I was with my sister that I remember that day. That was the saddest day of my life. Um, when they showed me that paper that, like, my mom signed me into foster care because I was ruthless. I was, I was going to end up dead. She wasn't going to, she didn't want to come home and her baby be dead. So she signed me in foster care. Um, and I didn't believe it. I was like, no, she didn't. Like, you're lying, you're lying. And my sister's fighting with him. She did not. Like, she's coming with me, da 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 blah, blah, blah. Then they pull out the paperwork and boom, right there it is. Plain black and white. She signed me into foster care. Um, at that point, they made my sister leave. I couldn't see my sister again. Um, they kicked her out, and I just, it was so sad. I waited in that room for mad long, mad long, and I just see my sister outside waiting for me, thinking I'm coming. I'm not coming. Like, I'm going to a whole nother home, man. Um, that was probably, that was the hardest time in my life, um, that first night in foster care, like, just, these are people you don't know, you don't know them at all, um, I ain't never met them, um, for all I know, they gonna beat me up, they gonna rape me, um, and there was, a had been a train out back of her, uh, out back of my foster mom's house, um, and my plan was to hop on the train and just go and never come back, um, I had called my sister that night, and I had said, like, I love you, um, blah, 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 and, like, I don't know, um, I don't know why I didn't hop on the train that night, I didn't go, um, yeah, I didn't go, and I'm happy I didn't, uh, from then, I got clean, uh, my foster mom was great, she was amazing, um, and it just, yeah, that was, like, once I realized I was in foster care and, like, I'm not getting out. And, like, it was whatever. But, like, I, I just, it wasn't something I could deal with. Uh, You can't do nothing. You can't have no phone. Nothing like that. And I just constantly was breaking the rules. So I was constantly getting sent to respite. Um, And just the fact that, like, me and my family are tight. Me and my sister are like that. Um, Sisters. Um, and just not being able to see them, like, I remember court dates, I'd count the days, I'd count the days, because that's the only time I'd ever, well, I'd see my sister Brittany, who was at court dates, um, and I didn't much see my parents, because they was in jail, uh, it was just hard, it was a lot, like, from the point to getting busted to the point of going for, to foster care, I felt so many feelings, so many emotions, and like I said, it was just a lot. Um, I, I, I like to say I'm so grateful for my sister, Brittany. She fought tooth and nail for me. She tried to do everything she could to get me out, but they just wasn't letting me out. They didn't want me out. They wanted me in there. Um, so she wasn't able to get custody of me. Uh, and that was the hardest thing of my life when I actually realized, like, I'm in here till the day I turned 18. Um, I'm not getting out. That was rough. That was real rough for me. But um, I made it through. And that is the end of my story time. I just wanted to tell you all about from the day my parents got busted to the day I went to foster care. Um, if you'd like more of these, we'll keep coming at you with them. It's all love. And I'm out. Who's up next?